What's good, people? Welcome to the show. I'm so glad you could be here. I'm your host, Jeff Taylor, and this is the Mad Jeff Music Show. I'm so excited you could be here today. Guess what? I got an interesting guest today, none other than this lady right here. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Tell me if you feel this. Get at me, Jimmy Fallon. Get at me. Get at me, y'all. Get at me. Hey, it's all good. Listen, I'm just out here trying to be the love that I want to see in the universe. Uh, and by bringing a guest like Lev Warfield to my show, being graced by her presence. Well, that in itself is quite the blessing, not only for me, but for you folks out there as well. So new artist alert. Not that new because she's been around paying her dues. But guess what? New to you. So here's a little news bit I'm going to drop for you real quick, all right? What's happening in the news, you say? What is happening in the news? This is happening in the news. And Nesby, one of a kind, baby. She's dropping a new record. I'm so excited about that because Anne is one of my favorite artists. I say that humbly as I had a chance to work with her in the past. To put it on paper, singer, still wearing your name. Girl can blow. You feel me? The queen, that's Ann Esby, she can really get it in. So check her record out, find it available on all those digital platforms. You know how they do, man. They distribute that stuff for you to find it and buy it and support. And more serious news. Alex Baldwin, bro. This is some serious junk right here because he was recently involved in a situation where he fired a prop gun on the set of his movie and he killed the cinematographer and injured the director. And um, that's a harrowing situation because you're out there doing what you love to do and uh, something as terrible as this happens. Um, and um, it's horrible. It's a horrible thing. Um, this YouTube, I'm sorry, this, um, this Twitter user, Melina, pointed out that we should have learned something or Hollywood should have learned something years ago but when something similar ha happened to Brandon Lee, uh, the son of Bruce Lee. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a very tragic thing, man. And it's, and it's a sad thing. And uh, um, rest in peace, Bruce. Rest in peace, uh, uh, Miss Hutchins, the lady that was killed on set with Alex. And uh, of course, the young Brandon as well. Tragedies, man, out there in the world. We gotta be careful, Hollywood. I know you wanted to look real, but come on, man. Not at the expense of people's lives. What's going on in the world? You remember this record, right? This is by none other than Matt Hoy. It's my homeboy from uh, from across the pond over there. He is uh, making some noise with this record. This record's strong. He's been doing really, really well. And um, Matt's been kind of getting a lot of attention. In fact, he's getting some attention and some consideration for best global music performance for his song Strong. So I'm stoked about that because, yeah, I was there on the ground floor when Matt was just getting his start as a solo artist. And I'm proud to say that. At the top of the show, we're about to get into my guest. And without further ado, she's in the green room checking out my news story. So let's go ahead and bring her in, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, this is the one and only Liv Warfield. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I know a lot of people that Prince knew. I'm not one of those guys that say I knew Prince like that because, you know, I was a passing right. acquaintance in the world that was Prince. Right. But I know a lot of people that he affiliated with on a regular. And uh, so I always made it a point to look at those people that I knew as well and try to determine from a creative standpoint, what is it that Prince liked about that person? Interesting mm. game, right? Uh -huh. right. What, what, is, what is Prince? Why does Prince like this guy? So my guy like Morris Hayes. First time I was in a rehearsal back in that garage days up in Minneapolis, I stood in a corner. I was invited to a rehearsal and I watched Morris Hayes for the first time on Keys. I was like, I see why he likes this country. This little country yeah. bumpkin right here. <laughs> right. That boy can right. play. Yeah, he was killing play. it. Play. Play. Morris is like an octopus, man. Like, when I saw Morris, when I first came to Paisley Park rehearsal, I was like, okay, wait. I knew where some of the patches were coming through, 
some of the shows, but Morris had all these patches and all these layers and like the timing of it all and like swiveling around the chair. And like, I was okay, he's, you know, Morris isn't just back there, just, you know, chording and playing these beautiful chords. Like Morris is like damn doctor. Yeah, he, you know? he's, yeah, he's a he's a he was a scientist with that. He brought that he brought that church got church black. I mean, they, they, the area of the country he came from was rooted in. I mean, that's where you learn the gut bucket really get down funky kind of funk. Uh, right, 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 right. You know, he brought that up there with him. So he, for him to be in that situation was awesome, and it's such a great player. But that's what he liked about Prince. Prince liked about him was that he could kill it. And then I know when I and I started thinking, so what did he like about Liv? What was it about Liv that he liked? And then I started reviewing your stuff and I started seeing some of your performances and I started saying, what the fuck? This woman. I'm I'm surprised because <clears throat> to be honest with you, I learned a lot as I went around with him and touring and stuff. Like I was very much R and B. Very much I I honestly really didn't get rock and rolled out until I joined uh mpg i always knew i loved it but it, but being around him it made it very very delicious <laughs> and i'm just kind of like you can't help but to pick up that energy and then he would just kind of like do you know about this person do you know this this person and um so i really dug deep but i also had when i had why do you lie out i was like listen i i I got some rock and roll from like past, which I felt was like seven years ago that I wrote, but it took a while to convince him though. <laughs> and he was like, Oh, okay. This is you. Well, like, I mean, then there was, there was this. I mean, yeah. Oh my God. Park, yes. Nancy, I mean, oh, huh? Yeah. Nancy Wilson. Like, like what? That don't get, it don't get much harder rock than that. That's classic rock right there all day long. Yeah, yeah. You were swimming with the big fishes. <laughs> I, I, I was blessed to kind of run into Nancy at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, and, and that was such a crazy thing because I was running to try to find Ann. We already know how explosive Ann is. And um, I couldn't find her. And then I, Nancy was just so inviting. And uh, I asked her about a song. At the time, I was working on Mantra. And I, I just wanted her to listen to the song. Um, and she's like, yeah, sure, no problem, but let's just not talk, let's meet. And we sure did, we had lunch in LA. We clicked so quick that she's like, well, do you want to start a band? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's do let's it. Do it. No, I'm assuming they had heard you or seen you perform at this time, by yeah. this time, right? Okay. Yeah, I think they had saw the uh, Jimmy Fallon performance. There you go. Uh, and, that, and that was cool, so yeah. What was cool about the Jimmy Fallon performance? Everything, hold up. That performance was crazy. I'm like, girl, stop. You, like, what? Jimmy Fallon gonna have to get at me about this. I don't care, bro. I got the footage. <laughs> and uh, it's how I roll, it's how I roll, it's how I roll. My question for you is how big is your damn band? <laughs> it used to be big like that. Uh, not anymore, that was what, probably 20 of us? Man, them horn horn players. Horn, some horn, horn, horn envy. Yeah, horn envy for real. Yeah, that was a crazy experience. That day for me was like, uh, I was a zombie that day. Like, I just, people ask me a lot about that experience. I was excited, but I was also just kind of like, this is you were this in is the, the You were in the machine, baby. You were in the machine at that point for Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> I was, I was. The performance speaks to that too i mean because you were having what i would have to say is an out-of-body experience up there on stage i mean it was everything flowed just like to perfection man that it's a standout performance thank you i i i haven't watched it a lot of times and when i do sometimes catch it uh it trips me out how synchronized everybody was like it was like we were on one accord for sure and you know definitely purple energy like I really mean that. I mean, it was heavy. It was heavy in the building that day. Heavy. I mean, that's why you do music, right? That's why you do this, right? So you can experience those moments like that. Yeah, of course. And after it was done, I was like, oh, okay. And then I remember Prince calling me in the room afterwards, just like you. He was like, and that look you gave afterwards. And I was like, yeah, you know, I felt like that was a nod to something I felt like you would do, you know, at the end. So, yeah. That's thrilling, man. What what a, what an experience. Now, 
you know, you've come a long way. I mean, from Peoria, is it? Yeah. Oh, mm, Peoria. Yeah. I did my little homework. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know some other fine people from that area as well. You know, Ann Nesby oh. and her family are from that area. That's right. That's right. The big Jim and all those people was my folks. Uh, Jamesia, Bennett, Paris, yeah. and them. That all from that area as well. You know Big Jim okay. from Peoria, did you? Uh-huh. Come on, Peoria. Yeah, okay. Put y'all Big Jim, put y'all on the map back in the day, in the 90s. I, I got yeah. from Peoria. I, I, okay. Somewhere, if right in that little area, right in, right around in that bowl, though, uh -oh. for sure. But you've come a long way from there. I mean, and then, uh, and then somehow or another you ended up in Portland. So how did that happen? What's what's going on with the, the Peoria to Portland? Is it just like cities with peas? Is Philadelphia next? And then or Phoenix? What's up? <laughs> Um, the short end of the story that will come out very soon, but, um, I, a track scholarship, I ran track and, um, what led me there was a man. Um, I was going to get married that never happened and I decided to stay and my parents were like, well, what is going on? We're moving. I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm, I'm gonna stay here and just we gonna make this thing work. And I did, and the music was not in the radar. I knew I always wanted to sing and stuff like that, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't my thing at the, at the beginning. Um, and then a friend of mine actually, uh, uh, he was like, you know, we have karaoke, this thing called karaoke in Portland. I grew up extremely sheltered, like very sheltered. The only thing I was listening to was like gospel, uh, Reverend James Cleveland. Like I'm telling you, church up, Sunday, you know, sun up, sundown. Um, so karaoke in a bar kind of thing. And I know it sounds really cliche, but as soon as I heard about that, baby, I was gone. I was like, what? I can sing? All right, let's do this. <laughs> up there, let's go. And after that, um, I started to go all the time, like, constantly it, it would blow people's mind how, how often i would be here because i thought i would be discovered there I, I i went through this whole thing and um and then that led to me trying to find musicians in uh, portland writers and hip-hop artists I, I really grew up a lot in that uh creative family in portland a lot of it portland really raised me in that way um when i'm telling you i was grassroots i was I've done it all. Like, I, I know how to be super independent <laughs> along the way, you know? Well, that's definitely the Portland way. I mean, it's, it's known as the grassroots, not necessarily known as a hub for, for, for thriving artists. I mean, you had Nirvana and Kurt Cobain and so forth. And, but, and, you know, for, for R and B singers and stuff like that, I mean, who's come out of Portland in, in your memory that I don't, I can't recall anybody. In my memory, no, I mean, because I'm not from there, but there were a lot of groups actually. You'd be surprised from Portland. I can't, forgive me, I can't name them off the uh, top of my head. Um, I'll get the one, it'll come to me at some point. Um, but there are actually like insane singers, insane songwriters in Portland. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, I mean I, I'm not surprised. It's typically wherever black folks are, there are talented singers. Clearly. <laughs> right. But but Portland honestly was a nest. It was a lot when I was in that little pocket in that time. What was 2000 to, uh, 2000 to 2009? Um, There's a lot of great musicians and stuff that I've worked with uh, in Portland. Yeah. Well, let me, uh, let's, so. I love the whole Prince connection with you. And, and so, so you went from literally singing karaoke, karaoke or karaoke. Huh? You know what? It's also gyro or gyro. I don't know what to ask the man for when I go to the wind. <laughs> That's all right. Either or. All right. So I wanted to bring you on the show because I want to know more about you as an artist. So we spoke earlier about Morris Hayes and he's, you know, producing in Princess Stead, the album, you know, the recent album. And you were a part of that record. What role did you play in that record? Me, Shelby, and Elisa, we all sang on that album. Um, that was such a crazy, fast experience for me because I, I was still very much new to NPG and still a baby. And just watching him really work, like, 
just coming into the studio every single day with like the lyrics and um, I don't know, just the, the melodies and the energy. He all wanted us to sing around one mic. Um, it just went really fast. Uh, and I was more focusing on uh, clearly hitting the right notes, but just, you know, I'm the kind of person who likes to sit back and kind of observe and watch the energy, you know, and watch how he moves and um, just kind of think about his thought process. And I always tell people who ask me this question, it's kind of like, you know, that I, I feel like with the lyrics and how this album was, there was a lot of trust involved on, on our part. Um, you know, I think that he really thought about that thoroughly um, with us, so lyrically and how, you know, how we take the lyrics and the energy of the song and how we put it to, you know, one mic and our voices because we were like one, like the girls and I, even at that time. So I think it was just, it was beautiful to see how it was all coming so fast and he would like tell us to look at the lyrics and I could see, I could feel him kind of breathing <laughs> down my neck in a way of just looking to see our reaction of what the lyrics were on the paper. Um, yeah, so it was such a, it was a beautiful experience just to watch him. As a new person in the industry, working with a, a person like that, yeah. when, you, when yeah, you're yeah. standing there and he's breathing down your neck, aren't you thinking to yourself, well, man, this guy worked with the time, he's been through this with Apollonia and Sheila E, and now oh, yeah. me. Oh yeah, <laughs> trust. Like I was always, I, it's so funny because at the time, like I was always on pins and needles in a way like, yes, you know, I got it, whatever, you know what I mean? I got this, what you want me to do? But there was also, he knew I was kind of, I was like that and he always made me feel comfort in a way of like, this is what I'm, this, you know, this is what I'm talking about, Liv. Like relax and put your head into the music and relax and put your mind into to the vibe, you know, Shelby was really, really good. Shelby was, you know, really, really good at making us feel that way. Um, Ali, my, my sister's always, there. again, there was a trust in all of us that he wanted and that it could be conveyed that way in this record, in the album. So, I mean, <laughs> and we, but we also had a lot of fun too. You know, he was always clowning, clowning me, clowning <laughs> one of us. Um, also a looseness there too was, it was, uh, a serious family, serious family vibes. You know, he trusted us big time. That's incredible. So lifelong friends now with Shelby and- uh... Absolutely, yes. Because I've seen in some of your performances, I mean, you have some you have some sisters singing with you too. Who are those ladies in your band that are singing back up? Oh, with you? insane. Ashley J, she's gone on to like, just do some craziness with like Monica and like Common, like that girl is, insanely gifted and then Saida Wright uh, just they're br just brilliant voices brilliant voices yeah my girl to have them in support of a, of a very strong voice already I mean you don't your voice is so strong you don't really need that level of support but it's nice to have that as a background huh? thank you oh yeah <laughs> and they be singing nice it's so what's up what's coming down the pipe for you what's um what are the plans for the future yeah, I'm excited. I've been working on this new album that's coming out next year. I've been working on this thing for five years. <laughs> um, I'm slow and I like to take my time. Uh, I'm, I'm really so excited about this just because I feel like this is really me. This is kind of like, I don't know. I've, I, it's just it's something about this one that I'm really, really, really hyped about. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm in this production in Chicago called Teatro Zanzani. Um, it's like Cirque du Soleil meets just crazy powerful singing and like, I don't know, it's a whole nother world that I love to be in. That's just me. I kind of like to keep it going and not stay still and put myself in very odd uh, positions to help myself grow, you know, as an artist. Um, and then I'll be singing December 10th at Royal Albert Hall with uh, Guy Barker. So I, your girl has been trying to stay busy because <laughs> I know what it feels like. God is so good because that downtime and what we, we've been going through the past two years, really just, I had to put my head straight. <laughs> And, you know. which, which is how this show, you know, began because I couldn't believe that some of the guys that I knew that were so talented weren't working at all, you know what I mean, right. during that time. So, yeah, to know what it's like to not have any work, yeah, you got to take advantage of it all right now. So.
hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I wasn't, I was actually, I was just, wasn't creative. You know, I took advantage of the simple fact that I could go call a friend or go over to somebody's studio. You know, I took that for granted. I know I did. And so now every moment that I'm able to be creative, I'm, I'm kind of everywhere. Cause people are like, Olivia, are you doing this? And you, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm back in Chicago. I'm, but I'm back. So I'm, I, I was catching like theater vibes, theater vibes, slightly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I can see it. I can definitely see it. I can definitely see you on Broadway. <laughs> All right. They need to do something with Ma Rainey in the title and bring you back. They have you up there. I'm here for it. All the way. All the way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the amazing live warfield and uh, it doesn't get any better than this having guests like this on my show is what it's all about that was live warfield and man it's exciting when new artists not so new again because she's been paying her dues but new to you all right Thanks to the Magic of Music Show. I'm just happy to be in a position to be able to do this because I really, really like the artist. And if I don't like the artist, I don't really get down with them. But Liv is hard not to like. Her talent is on display on any of her on any of her records. I mean, you can go out and get her records right now and listen to them or get them up, pull them up on Spotify. And you'll see Liv Warfield is the real deal. So again, I, all I can say is that I'm excited that Liv could come on and do my show. And Ah, it just makes me feel really good whenever I have a guest on the show as cool as live. Paradise Hill Productions and RM2 Music are proud sponsors of the Mad Jeff Music Show, bringing you real talent, real music, and real musicians. Sharing the same values, we put our artists first so they can thrive and deliver to you, the listener, timeless music and great shows. So check it out, check it out. My next guest on the show is none other than Lisa Keith and Spencer Bernard. Now, this married duo of singer, songwriter, producers, you know, they're they're all kinds of things, man. Very talented duo. And you don't know that you know them, but they've been on records made by the Flight Time crew in the early days of the uh, Flight Time Productions out of Minneapolis, singing sweet backgrounds and in incredible songs. Funny how huh? time flies. Yeah, I mean, look it up. Read the credits, man. Read the credits. And you'll learn some things about Lisa, Keith, and Spencer Bernard. They're going to be my guests, and they're coming on November the 2nd, man. That is coming right around the corner. It's already November. That means Thanksgiving is here and everything else. Oh, my God. It's turkey time. It's time to make some turkeys. Listen, if you want to reach me on social media, you can definitely get me, man. I'm available on the Magic Music Show on YouTube, Facebook, um, Mad Jeff Music Show on Instagram, and uh, you can even support the show by uh, scanning that little icon there. Donate, buy me a cup of coffee or something like that if you want to. Hey, and if you want to buy some of my sample CDs and get inspired by some of the music I've made over the years as a producer, you can scan this logo right here, and it'll take you directly to my my uh, store, my digital store online, where you can make any purchase of a digital download, have it in your studio, working with you in a matter of moments. Also got some books, too, that I think are a good read. And if you're interested in, you know, music for the value of money or music for business relationships or gear on the go and so forth, scan the icon, man. It'll take you to my store. Yeah, baby. That's it. That's all I got on that end right there. But also, I just wanted to quickly say, if you know of anybody who uh, is in a having some trying times and going through some depression, you might want to pass this number on to them. It's 1-800-273-TALK. That's the Suicide Prevention High Club. Thanks so much for tuning into my show. Until we meet again, um, all I can say is be well. I'm out here trying to tell you the stories that might not otherwise get told. And I'm glad that you're supporting me in the Magic Music Show. It's really a sweet thing. What else? Uh, let's see. Uh, be the love in the world you want to see. That's all I can say. <laughs> Until we meet again next Tuesday. All right. I hate to go. I hate to go.